All right, the president has made it clear over the past few weeks that he is not giving up on health care reform. In fact, he is gearing up for a televised bipartisan health care summit. And here is how he built it. I want to come back and have a uh, large meeting, Republicans and Democrats, to go through systematically all the best ideas that are out there and move it forward. All right, but other Democratic leaders have something else in mind, and they're not sounding too bipartisan. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi seems to be leaning towards reconciliation. Now, she told Roll Call, quote, we need the, uh, to set the stage for that. The public knows that a constitutional majority is 51. It would be a reflection on us if we could not convince people that this is not an unusual place to go. So is the San Francisco Speaker, is she off script, or is the bipartisan meeting that the president is orchestrating just a sham. Joining me now with analysis is Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, the second most loved and hated Republican woman. How are you, Congresswoman? <laughs> Quite a distinction. Thank you, Sean. All right. So uh, first of all, if the president says he wants bipartisanship, and that very ne that very day that, or next day you have Robert Gibbs mocking Governor Palin on the one hand, and then he wants to push a health care summit, on the one hand, and then on the other hand, Nancy Pelosi is, is saying we're going to ram it down your throat anyway. Can we believe them? Are they being disingenuous? Well, that's the question that we need to have addressed because the president only let John Boehner, the Republican leadership, know that he wanted a health care summit just an hour before he went on national TV with Katie Couric to announce this is what he wanted to do. No heads up, in, in effect. Then uh, John Boehner sent a letter to President Obama asking questions, are we going to start over or are we working off of your Democrat plan? The president was real clear. He said he plans to pass the Democrat plan. Robert Gibbs went to the microphone, said the same thing. And then, as you said, Speaker Pelosi's number one health care negotiator in the House said they've got a legislative trick and they know exactly how they're going to pass their plan. That's after the president's invitation. If they're already saying they're going to plan, they're, they're going to pass their bill, then what is this right. for at this summit? All right, so then, then the question becomes politically, is, is the president, are the Democrats, are they trying to set it up uh, to sort of reinforce their talking points that the Republican Party is the party of no, and Republicans, would they be wise to say thanks but no thanks, you spent a year ramming this down our throat and you have something sneaky behind the scenes, will you be able to communicate that with the American people? Well, the president has two problems. One is transparency. He said at least eight times on videotape he was going to have the negotiations on C-SPAN. He didn't, so that's a problem. And bipartisanship. He claimed he was going to be bipartisan. There's not one Republican bill in the, in the book. So if his intent is to get a photo op so he can check the box and claim that he has bipartisanship and transparency, then that seems pretty disingenuous. Right, this is so, really about... Go but, ahead. But, but, but if so, Republicans don't go he's going to claim i open the door they said no so well he can he can claim that and again i think republicans want to meet we want to discuss but we don't want to have just a political dog and pony show we want real negotiations and real discussion we would love to be able to present our our great ideas before the president we just want to know if that's really what he's looking to do all right so it, are you looking specifically for a promise in other words mr president do you promise and i saw the letter that john boehner and eric Cantor sent to the president are, do you need a promise or a commitment that he will not use the reconciliation process before it would be wise enough to sit down? I think the best negotiation would be one where the president says, I will not use the reconciliation, the legislative trick in the Democrats' own vernacular, and where he says, we'll start from scratch, we'll start over with a blank sheet of paper, and we'll start new with our ideas, and we'll truly come together with cameras, both sides, and come to a discussion. That's really what the American people expect, and that'd be the best outcome. Now, the president said something last week that I don't, I don't think a lot of people caught, because he he campaigned on the idea, not only C-SPAN, he'd eliminate earmarks and lobbyists, which we spent a lot of time talking about, but he also campaigned and said that he would not raise taxes on people that made under $200,000, $250,000. It kept changing, so I can't give you the exact number. So now the president last week said he's agnostic on the idea of tax increases. He set up this idea that we're going to have a, quote, bipartisan commission on deficit reduction, 
there's going to be more, twice as many Democrats to Republicans. Is he using that as a mechanism to provide him cover to break his promise and raise taxes, in your view? Well, it could be, because again, the American people see the handwriting on the wall. You can't pass trillion dollar stimulus, monster uh, budget deficits with 9,000 earmarks on it, continue to go on a spending spree and think that the piper won't be paid. That's why now the president is, quote, agnostic on tax increases, because the party has, the bill for the party has to be paid for. And of course, it's going to be all of America, and it, and it won't be just 5% of America. It will be going down to the middle class. People know that. And so the president has to figure out some way to spread the blame for all of this spending, right. but Republicans have said no to this out-of-control spending.